The thyroid is a butterfly shaped gland in your neck and it is the master gland. So think of it as the ultimate controller of all things in your body. So you might be struggling with low mood, brain fog, depression. Okay, here's an antidepressant. Blood pressure problems, here's a blood pressure medication. Oh, look, my cholesterol's high, here's a statin. Oh, look, I have diabetes. That's big time correlated with hypothyroidism, but here's a medication for your diabetes. Instead of looking at what is causing it, just like you do with bone, what is the root cause of all of these symptoms? So instead of band-aiding them, let's go to the master gland and make sure that's functioning properly first. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. It's a little red button, you punch that, and it's gonna notify you every time we put out a new episode that can help you improve your bone health. And then also, if you haven't done so already, head over to bonecoach.com, sign up for the free seven-day osteoporosis kickstart. That's gonna walk you through everything you need to be doing right now to get on the path to improvement and stronger bones. After you do those two things, go ahead and press play on this episode, and I'll see you inside. Welcome, welcome to this episode of The Bone Coach Show. Joining us today is Dr. Amy Horniman, aka The Thyroid Fixer. She's a woman on a mission to optimize thyroid patients around the world and give them their lives back using her proprietary transformational program, The Fix Method. She's also the founder of the Institute for Thyroid and Hormone Optimization. After her own experience of insufferable symptoms, misdiagnosis, and improper treatment, Dr. Amy set out to help others who knew what they were going through, the same set of frustrations, and who are on the same medical roller coaster. She grabs your hand, gives you answers about your health that no one has told you, and gives you the actual tools and personalized treatment to fix you. What makes her program unique is the extra support and accessibility that you can't find anywhere else. And that's really the part of the transformational journey with a focus on optimizing thyroid and hormone function and doing that for her patients. Dr. Amy looks at a unique individual person not just the lab value. And she examines all the factors that tie into thyroid dysfunction and thyroid symptoms and fixes you to give you your life back. Super excited to have you here today. Dr. Amy, welcome to the show. Hi, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, thanks so much for being here. So I, I want to start, I always like to start out with how did you really get started in this field and how did thyroid, the focus on thyroid become your specialty? So very similar to you, pain to purpose story, you know, you go through something on your own and then you figure out that you have to help other people with this too. So I was years ago, many years ago, I was competing and I was doing fitness modeling and figure competitions. So I would have to stand on stage in a bikini and get really, really lean. So the diet was strict, the exercise was strict, but I had done it multiple times. Anytime I got ready for a photo shoot, a show, I did the dieting thing and got my body nice and lean and tight multiple times. This one particular show prep, I started gaining weight instead of losing weight. So biologically, it wasn't even making sense based on what I was eating. Not that I'm a calories in, calories out kind of girl, but based on what I was eating, didn't make sense. So I did what we all do. We go see our doctor. And I said, you know, doc, I don't know what's going on. I'm gaining weight. Oh, by the way, I'm also tired and my hair is falling out. I don't get it. I shouldn't be gaining. I should be losing. He looks at me and goes, "Eh, I don't know. You're normal. Everything's fine. So then I kept going, kept going. Six doctors misdiagnosed me, six of them. The seventh one finally diagnosed me and I was so excited because she said, okay, you have hypothyroidism, you have Hashimoto's. Yes. All right. Awesome. There's a pill. There's going to be a pill to fix this. I'm going to lose the weight and I'm going to feel better. And she gave me T4 and I went home five months later, no change, not a pound lost, not a hair grown on my head, no difference in how I felt whatsoever. So I start doing my research. So then we go to Dr. Google, right? We get on our computers, we start typing in. I go back to her, I go, you know, there's so many other thyroid medications out there. And there's so many other ways to treat this. Can we do something else? She goes, no, I don't do that. I said, well, I'm going to find somebody who does. So that's what led me to back then. It wasn't even called functional medicine. It was integrative medicine, alternative medicine. But I found who is now my mentor, my functional guy. And I kept hearing his name. And I truly believe when you hear something multiple times, it's, it's God telling you, pushing you that way. 
I'm like, okay, okay. I've heard this guy's name multiple times. I'll go see him. Totally changed my life. Gave me my life back. Tested how I should be tested. We talked supplements. We talked nutrition. We got me on the right thyroid medication. And that completely changed the trajectory of my career. I mean, he became my mentor. I studied under him. I now treat patients the same way I learned 20 some years ago, really diving into everything, looking at the full picture, looking at how the labs tell us a story, even though there's not an L or an H next to a lab value, it's pairing it all up and it's looking for optimal and not normal. Because I really felt like the frustration that I felt and thank God I had the gumption to keep going because I still to this day think, what if I would have stopped at doctor number two or doctor number five or doctor number six? I wouldn't be here with you today. I would be 300 pounds and bald laying on my couch because no one had the answer for me. So that's really what led me into fixing people's thyroids and hormones and, and giving people their life back. That's an amazing story. And I you brought up so many uh, so many relatable things there. I mean, for one, it's almost like dating a physician, right? To see if they're the right fit, are they going to help you get the right answers you need? Are you going to be there? It is rarely ever perfect on the first time. Like rarely do you just find that person and they're the right one for you. Mm -hmm. So having that persistence, having the patience to stick that out is so important. Uh, and then you also touched on, you know, not just looking at the lab value itself, and sometimes that could be considered normal, we have to look for what's optimal or ideal. Right. So I love that you said both of those things. Now, because you're, you specialize in thyroid health, and, and I want to talk about, let's even get real basic here. Mm -hmm. What is the thyroid? Where is it located? What is its function? So the thyroid is a butterfly-shaped gland in your neck. And it is the master gland. So think of it as the ultimate controller of all things in your body. It controls the entire, it controls the entire body. So it's controlling your metabolism. It's controlling your gut motility, which is why a lot of hypothyroid patients will become constipated. It controls your brain function, your heart, your nutrient absorption. It controls every single aspect of your body, which is why I believe it doesn't get enough love in conventional medicine. We don't spend enough time looking at it and really making sure that people are optimal and not normal because it, it without that working optimally, nothing else in your body is going to work optimally. So you might be struggling with low mood, brain fog, depression. Okay, here's an antidepressant blood pressure problems. Here's a blood pressure medication. Oh, look, my cholesterol is high. Here's a statin. Oh, look, I have diabetes. That's big time correlated with hypothyroidism, but here's a medication for your diabetes. Instead of looking at what is causing it, just like you do with bone, what is the root cause of all of these symptoms? So instead of band-aiding them, let's go to the master gland and make sure that's functioning properly first. And so when we do that, so when we're how are we evaluating thyroid function to see if it's working properly? So you just listed off some of the symptoms and things like that. Really interesting one is gut motility that can be slowed down. Um, but how are we actually knowing objectively that it's the thyroid that's contributing to these issues? So we test, don't guess, but I would bet money if I could go back and look at the tests that were run on me when I was first doing my search and going to doctor number one, two, three, six, I would bet money that they only tested two factors. They tested TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. So just to kind of break it down a little bit for people to understand your, your hypothalamus in your brain talks to your pituitary gland in your brain. And then the pituitary talks to the thyroid. So sometimes you'll hear this HPT access terminology, that's what we're talking about. And the pituitary talks to the thyroid by stimulating it if it feels like it's not doing its job. So I, I like using analogies too. I know you do. So it's like if, if you got kids and they're doing something bad or you want Johnny to pick up his toys, Johnny, pick up your toys. And then Johnny doesn't pick Johnny, pick up your toy. And your voice gets louder. 
that is the pituitary starting to scream a little bit more at the thyroid because it's saying, hey, buddy, you're not doing your job. You need to wake up and get to it here. So that is TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. That's released by the pituitary gland. But you have to remember that it is a pituitary hormone. That's not a thyroid hormone. So that's just testing. Is your pituitary on point and paying attention to what's going on in here? Or is it not? Then there's T T4. So you might get a total T4. You might get a free T4. T4 is the inactive thyroid hormone. That's like the gas that's at the gas station. You got to go get it. It's not in your car yet. It can't run your engine because it's not even there. T4 is totally inactive. So yeah, while it's good to test it and it's good to test TSH too, there's so many more tests that we have to do to really get the full picture of your thyroid health. We want to test free T3. T3 is the active thyroid hormone. That's the gas that's in your car, running your motor, getting you to the store. Then we look at reverse T3, which is the anti-thyroid hormone. We don't want that to be high. So I can dive into that a little bit more if you'd like. And then there's TPO and TGA antibodies. That's testing for Hashimoto's, the autoimmune form. Most of the time, if someone has a thyroid problem, it's going to be Hashimoto's. 95% of all low thyroid function is caused by the autoimmune condition. Hashimoto's, where your body's attacking your thyroid gland because it thinks it's an invader, thinks it's a bad guy, where the other five-ish percent is caused by extreme dieting, extreme exercise, certain medications, radiation, chemotherapy, but that's only really about 5% of the population with hypothyroidism is caused by a, a different factor other than autoimmune. Okay, so we've got the most common causes that we see of thyroid, you know, issues being Hashimoto's. Mm -hmm. And then we've got, you know, these other ones, you mentioned medication specifically. Also, what are some of the medications that can contribute uh, to thyroid dysfunction? Birth control is a big one, ladies, synthetic hormones, synthetic birth control can cause thyroid dysfunction, certain antidepressants and antipsychotics, a really popular one that was used ad nauseum back in the day, lithium, that tanks the thyroid. Um, certain beta blockers can as well. So there's a lot of medications that you could be on that just slow down thyroid function. And we can get you off of those and then still fix the thyroid to be its best self again. But we have to find that root cause of what's actually down-regulating thyroid function. Sure. Um, let's talk about so we were talking about normal ranges and optimal ranges, because a lot of times what, what happens with people is they go to their physician uh, and they get these results back and they're looking at them and they're, they may be within the normal range. Yeah. Does that mean that the thyroid is no functioning normal? No, 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 not at all. I hate, hate the word normal. I hate you're fine. You're normal. Everything's good, right? That's what women get told. Or you're just getting older. You just have to suck it up. This is how you're going to feel. No. So there is normal and there's optimal. You have to remember that whenever, I don't care if you're looking at thyroid labs, if you're looking at, at insulin testing, if you're, whatever you're looking at on your blood work that's sitting in front of you, you see that standard lab value range to the side. And that's where if you fall within that big range, you will be called normal because there's not a little L or an H next to it. You have to remember that in order for medicine to get those ranges, they took them from a massive group of people. And most of those people were sick and they were overweight and they're hitting McDonald's every single day, but they don't care when they're doing that, gathering the information to get that standard lab value range. They are not weeding out the fat, sick and tired people. What functional medicine does is we come in and we say, we want the badasses, the lean, mean, feeling amazing, that 75-year-old that's still skiing. Yeah, we want that person. And we're going to test them and find where they are because that's the optimal range. That's the bullseye on your labs where you want to get to that we want you to get to because we know that's where you're going to feel your best. You're not just going to be schlepping through the day. You're going to feel like a rock star when you're in that optimal range. That's great. And, and what do optimal ranges look like for the different lab results that we're going to look at in terms of thyroid function? So for TSH, we want that below a two. Now, TSH has actually been debated in the thyroid community, in the endocrine, endocrinologist community even, where 
over the years, that range went from zero to 10. You got cut off at 10. Now, one thing to remember with TSH, remember how I said it's a pituitary hormone? This is one of the only tests you'll see where high means low. So the higher that TSH goes in the range, the lower your thyroid is functioning, the more hypothyroid you are. So when I say functional medicine wants it below a two, that's because we don't want you in those higher ranges where the pituitary has to scream at the thyroid. When that TSH starts to get high, that actually is where your doctor might pay attention to you is when that TSH is actually high and flagged that it's still not a good place to be because your pituitary is still sensing that the thyroid is not working well. That's why it's screaming at it. Just like we're screaming at Johnny to pick up his toys. Then when we move on to the free T4, that's again, less important. It's the inactive thyroid hormone, but I still want that like a 1.2, 1.5 ish. And this is pretty much standard across the board in all labs. So whether you're going to lab call request or wherever your doctor's office, it's pretty standard. Free T3, which is the active thyroid hormone. This is the important one. This is vitally important because that lab range could vary a little bit, but let's say it starts at around a 2.2. If you're a 2.3, you're going to be called normal. Now let's use logic. It's at the bottom barrel of the range. Optimal 3.5 or above. So if you're at a two, or I'll say in the upper quadrant of that free T3 range. So if you're in a different country and you're listening, it's going to be in that upper quadrant of the free T3 range. So if you're way down here in the lower quadrant, that's not good. You don't have enough active thyroid hormone in your body to run the whole show. That is not a good scenario to be in. And that is far from optimal. We drop down the reverse T3. Reverse T3, again, range, huge, goes up to 24. I don't care what country you're in. It goes up to 24. You're not even getting flagged until you hit 25 or above. I want it less than 12. And, and just to, so people can understand reverse T3, we said T3 is the active thyroid hormone. Guess what? That's going to give you the metabolism, allow you to burn body fat, strengthen your bones, give you the nutrients that you need, let you poop every day, which you need to be doing to eliminate toxins. That's T3. So obviously we want that in the optimal range. Reverse T3 is like the bouncer at the club. Reverse T3, if there's too many reverse T3s, right? If it's above a 12. Reverse T3 is standing outside the cell door going, all right, T3, you're not getting in. And you're not getting in either. And it's literally preventing the active thyroid hormone from getting into the cell to do its job. So we obviously we don't want that high. We want it less than 12. And that's a test that you have to beg your doctor for nine times out of 10. Then there's TPO and TG antibodies, those tests for Hashimoto's. I just saw this today. So I, I love talking about the lab value ranges. I want them at zero. I don't care if the lab says less than 20, less than 34, less than nine. I don't care. If you come in with an antibody, if you come in with one or three or 10, those are 10 soldiers that are attacking your thyroid on a daily basis. And my question for diagnosing Hashimoto's is, are we going to wait? until the person has 45 antibodies or 35 antibodies. And again, they are overweight and tired. Now they have diabetes. Now they're on the couch. They're not moving. They have no energy. They're not taking care of themselves. They're not exercising. Well, then we'll call them Hashimoto's and maybe pay attention to them. No, we want to see those antibodies and say, Hey, um, your immune system's kicking up here and thinks that your thyroid is a bad guy. So we might need to do something about this and address it right now. So those are all the labs and optimal versus normal. Super helpful. So, so I do want to talk about also, because we talked about causes already. We talked about Hashimoto's. We talked about some of the other causes. We talked about optimal ranges. What role can gut health? So if maybe our gut health is off, how can that impact our thyroid function? Oh, big time, big time. So we know... We know now, this is actually more common knowledge, even outside of our little functional space, that the immune system starts in the gut and that there is a definitive gut brain connection and that the gut has so much control over our body. It's, it's actually fascinating. So when the gut is dysregulated, whether it is another autoimmune condition like Crohn's or celiac, if it is just IBS or ulcerative colitis, something like that. When the gut is off, 
that is your body giving you a signal. Hello, something's not right. Now we can tie all this together and we can bring it back to gluten. We know that gluten breaks down the gut lining and it opens doors and allows toxins to go into the body. And that's where we get this full systemic, full body inflammation response. We also know that gluten is a, a, a molecular mimicker. Can't say that five times fast. It, it looks like the thyroid gland. So if you do have Hashimoto's and you eat gluten, which is destroying your gut and opening up the gut lining and allowing toxins to come in, we also know, in addition to doing that damage, we know that your soldiers that like to beat up your thyroid gland, they see gluten come in they go, hey, this thing looks like the thyroid gland. It's another invader. We should go out and attack it. So then you get an, an attack on the gluten molecule because it looks like the thyroid gland. And then it goes over and attacks your thyroid some more. So we can see the, the whole gut connection with what we eat, the inflammatory response, the autoimmune attack response of the gut. And let's not forget that T4 to T3 conversion, T4 inactive, T3 active, T4 has to convert over and literally become T3. Some of that takes place in the gut, some in the liver, a lot in the thyroid gland, some in the gut. So if your gut's a mess, you're losing that conversion factor. You're losing that T4 to T3, the active thyroid hormone conversion because your gut's a disaster. And have you seen situations where someone improves their gut and maybe that conversion is actually improved? It does help. It's usually a ton of other factors. So when, when someone has a conversion issue, it's usually low iodine, low magnesium, low selenium, low D, um, insulin resistance, wonky hormones, and, and the gut. So you have to do everything. I have a saying, I would say both and, because we're not just going to fix your thyroid, or we're not just going to fix your gut, or we're not just going to throw hormones at you. We're going to do both and. So we're going to do it all. So it all kind of works together and we're not leaving out a factor that could be contributing to a conversion problem. Love that. Um, so let's say we do identify that our ranges are not where they need to be. We have an issue with thyroid function. Can you just lay out what are the different potential treatment options mm -hmm. for improving thyroid function? Let's just put them all on the table. Absolutely. So first and foremost, thyroid replacement therapy. Notice I didn't say medication because medication gets a bad rap because sometimes we have people, you have clients, I have patients that come in and say, I don't want to go on medication. So we go, okay. But in the case of the thyroid, it really depends on how far along in your journey you are. So with Hashimoto's, we know that the thyroid gland becomes destroyed. Those soldiers go out, they beat it up. And we can actually see on an ultrasound, we can see the, the, the borders are irregular and we can see the shrinking of the thyroid gland because it's being destroyed. So depending on how far along you are in that Hashimoto's destruction, or if you've had a total thyroidectomy, radioactive iodine, a partial thyroidectomy, that is where thyroid hormone replacement therapy has to come in. We have to use Thyroid hormones, T4, T3, combination of one or the other, both, whatever, in varying amounts of what works for you. There's no one pad answer. There's no blanket answer for that. It's the combination of medication that thyroid hormone replacement therapy that works for you. And we have to use that in order to bring those levels back up. So we talked about the optimal ranges. I want to see that free T3 out of the basement. And to get it out of the basement, we might have to use thyroid hormone replacement therapy. Other things that we can do kind of going down the natural path would be to look at your nutrients, make sure that we're using those supportive nutrients to improve T4 to T3 conversion, make sure that we're supporting the immune system so that with, you know, with autoimmune, again, the soldier, they're just confused. We want to just calm them down. We want them to just chill out. Don't go out and attack anything. All is well here. So we want to support the immune system to calm down the autoimmune response. And then we will look for things like underlying infections, co-infections, Epstein-Barr virus, Lyme disease, 
all of those other factors that can contribute and turn on that Hashimoto switch. I'm really, really big into balancing hormones specifically. Well, I can't give love to one over the other. They're all important. All the sex hormones are important, but testosterone really gets a bad, not a bad rap, but it doesn't get enough of a love in the female health space because we think of it as a male hormone but it's so vitally important for females. And with low testosterone, that will flip on the Hashimoto switch. So again, everything is beautifully connected. Low testosterone will flip on the Hashimoto switch. And really, if we just treated with testosterone and got a woman's testosterone level up, not only, and I'm sure you see this with bones too, not only does she have stronger bones, she's got stronger muscles, she has better support of her skeletal system, she has more motivation to actually go out and exercise. She has more brain clarity. And guess what? That's also improving the thyroid function. So there's so many different angles that we can go, but it's all about making it unique to the person and making sure that the, the labs come back in the optimal range. Yeah, no, that's great. And, and I, I know for you, you've mentioned uh, even in our own conversations about bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, definitely something to be uh, considered. Um, any, any other important considerations that you think are around bioidentical hormone replacement therapy? Well, estrogen. So you spoke about estrogen's role in bone formation. I might be getting the the terminology wrong, but estrogen is important for your bones. Hmm. We see bone loss in where? Postmenopausal women. That's when estrogen levels decrease. Now, estrogen has really been villainized because of an old, old study called the Women's Health Initiative where again, we talked earlier about looking at sick people. This study was the most expensive study ever performed. But the problem is it scared women away from hormones. Not only did the Women's Health Initiative study use synthetic hormones like that in birth control, PremPro, Premarin, but it also used, it, it, didn't, it didn't weed out the sick women. So you already had some women with diabetes and heart disease and a predisposition for breast cancer. Some of them already had the start of breast cancer. And then they gave them these synthetic hormones and they went, Oh, guess what? Estrogen causes breast cancer. Wait a minute. No, no real bioidentical matching. What is in your body? Estrogen is actually protective against breast cancer. It protects your bones. It builds collagen. It is the basis of hyaluronic acid and collagen and elastin formation for our skin, for our bones, for our hair, for our nails. There is, we now have in medicine, the ability to give back hormones that are no longer being made. And we can't be scared of that because hormones give us life. Now, some hormones are vital for life. So if you were a type one diabetic and you had to take insulin, which is a hormone, you would take it because if you didn't, you would die. If you don't have a thyroid gland and you don't take thyroid hormones, you'll live for a while, but not long. You're going to die. Sex hormones, we can live without, but we're not living well without them. So why not take the, the, I don't want to say technology, but just the, the ability, why not take the ability to replace hormones that are no longer being made in your body? Let's take it. Let's do it because then you feel so much better. It, your life literally just comes back. You become more youthful. You become more you when we do that. So I am not afraid of bioidentical hormone replacement therapy because when it's, when it is bioidentical and not synthetic, it's a world of difference. You can't even compare the two. What are the situations where y- you would want to proceed with caution or not proceed at all with bioidentical hormone replacement? It's really individualized. It depends. So if, if you had a patient that had breast cancer, has a history, and even that alone does not rule it out because there's a, there's a brilliant doctor, Dr. Lindsay Burks, and um, she is a breast cancer survivor. She talks ad nauseum about the benefits of estrogen and the benefits of bioidentical hormone replacement. But there are some cases where maybe it was um, an estrogen receptor breast cancer that we won't use that. But we let's not be scared of a tiny little bit of progesterone. Progesterone is the calming hormone, the balancing hormone. Let's not be scared of a little bit of testosterone. Yeah, testosterone can aromatize the estrogen, 
but very, very small if you're using just little amounts. We're not using like bodybuilder amounts. So it, it's it's a case by case basis based on that female's history. Okay. Um, and, and are there situations where, you know, maybe you've seen somebody, I don't know how, do you see patients that come to you and maybe they've already been on medication for a long period of time? Uh, and maybe it's 20 years in some cases or 25 years. What is the what is the outlook for making improvement in those situations? And is there ever a situation where you see someone be able to come off of thyroid replacement? Also, okay. So outlook for them, I'll answer that first. Hundred percent. I I don't care if you've been on. Like I told my story about T four. I gave it five months. Didn't work. I'm very impatient. But I don't care if you've been on T four for twenty years and you're just now going crap, really? I can feel better. I can feel, I thought this was as good as it was going to get. No, it's not. You can't, you, we, we can start wherever you are in your journey. We can get you optimized. Absolutely. Now, can we do, can we get you off medication? That goes back to how far along are you? How far along is the progression of your hypothyroidism? So if you have Hashimoto's and you basically have a teeny little, teeny tiny thyroid gland left, we're going to have to use medication. The answer is no, you can't get off of it. But again, why would you want to if it's giving you your life back? And if there's virtually no side effects once we find the, the right hormone replacement for you. Now, if you're in the beginning stages, and I do have people like this come to me, and I get excited when they're in the very, very beginning stages, like their numbers are just a little bit off. Maybe they just have a, a couple antibodies but oh my gosh, the numbers don't, don't look really bad. They're almost optimal. Let's catch it now and either get you off medication or keep you off medication and do all of the things to treat it naturally. So making sure your insulin levels are low, balancing hormones, making sure you're on the right diet. You're not destroying your gut. You're not eating gluten. It looks like a, a, a molecule similar to the thyroid gland. So we can start doing all the natural things, using the support of nutrients and really keep someone off thyroid medication or get them off of it. Love it. And, and I know you mentioned uh, you brought up nutrients and minerals a couple different times. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that for just a second too. So what are the, the minerals and the nutrients and all those things that we need to support healthy thyroid function? So very similar to what you tell your people and you tell your audience about the importance of minerals for bone. Same ones, same ones for thyroid. You need vitamin D, you need D with K, you need magnesium for conversion. I don't know how much you talk about iodine, Kevin, but iodine is a big one. Low iodine levels will increase reverse T3. Every cell in our body needs iodine. So I love that just in small amounts. Um, we need selenium. We need, uh, am I missing anything? Protein. We need protein. So I'm a huge fan of collagen. I'm a huge fan of bone collagen bone broth, getting in different protein sources to, again, balance hormones. So you need protein to have muscle, to have good testosterone levels. We need protein for our metabolism, to feel good, for energy. So low protein will actually kind of mimic the effects of a low thyroid. I'll even have patients that I'm working with, they'll be doing really well. And they'll be like, I think I need more thyroid medication. I don't feel well. So I start with are you sleeping? How much protein are you taking in on a daily basis? Are you counting your grams? Oh, well, yeah, I did start to slide off on that a little bit. Well, there you go. There's your low energy. There's your weight gain. You're losing muscle mass again. Your hair's going to crap because you're not getting in the amino acids that are needed. So similar to bone, you need those amino acids. Absolutely. Yeah. Protein is so, so important for, you know, not just your, your bone health or your thyroid function. I mean, for, for bones, protein makes up 50% of your, your bone by volume. So that's, that's a significant amount. And then to rebuild anything inside your body, you need amino acids, right? And those are the building blocks of protein. So I'm so glad you touched on that too. Um, any other important considerations or things that maybe we haven't discussed about thyroid function that you think would be important for the audience to understand? So especially for your audience, because you are talking to the women in the same age bracket where I start to see them as well. Sometimes 40s, sometimes 30s and 40s, um, but big time 50s and 60s. 
And this is the the time where women want to live their best life. They they start to realize like, hey, wait a minute, I'm not in my 20s anymore, but I want to be a rock star. I want to feel great. I want to stay active. I want to play with my kids. I want to play with my grandkids. I want to go on vacation. So that's really where I start to see them. Now, many of your listeners might have a thyroid problem now. So let's say you guys are on T4, Synthroid, Levo, uh, Tyrosin, T4 only. If that's not working, if you don't feel your absolute best, because nine times out of 10, T4 only does not work because that's the inactive thyroid hormone and it has to convert. And there's a lot of things that, that come into play with conversion. I urge you to make sure you're getting all the testing done and really looking at that free T3 and reverse T3 number. The thing with T4, it's a little bit tricky. T4 has two paths it can go on. It can go and convert to free T3, and that's awesome, and that's what we want it to do. Or it can convert to the bouncer at the club. It can convert to reverse T3. To not test reverse T3 with someone on T4 only is a medical crime. You have to make sure that they are converting. So that's part one. Part two would be your doctor might start freaking out if your TSH, that pituitary hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone is low. And I mean, when I said optimal is below it too, I mean, it can go all the way down to whatever. Um, my TSH, just the share is like 0. 0.007. It's considered suppressed. It's considered incredibly low. So you might get a doc or two that hasn't boned up, no pun intended, on their, on their research. And they'll tell you, you know what, you, Susie, you're going to start losing some bone with your TSH down so low. We need to decrease your thyroid medication. Then they do that. And you're like, oh, now I'm gaining weight. Now I'm tired. This wasn't a good move. So you're doing this to protect my bones. But now I feel like garbage. A low TSH is not correlated to bone loss. And there have been studies out there. I can dig them up and actually send them to you if you want to put them in the show notes. But there are studies out there that have debunked that myth. So we no longer fear a low TSH because if you think about the mechanism, if you think about what I told you about what TSH is, it's the pituitary sensing and saying, hey, is there enough thyroid hormone in the body? Are we happy with the levels? Okay, yes. And it shuts up. So the TSH goes down because it doesn't have to yell at the thyroid gland anymore. All is well, you're balanced, you're good. The last thing we want to do is bring that TSH back up to where it has to start yelling at the thyroid again, because then you go into a hypo space. It doesn't, it's not going to affect bone. And especially if they're, your listeners are doing all the things that you tell them to do, you have double protection right there. So we want you feeling good. We want you out of that low hypo state. We want you exercising. We want you having energy. We don't want you carrying around an extra 50 pounds on your body. That's not good for you. So let's do that and implement all of your strategies to have strong, healthy bones. And then you don't have to worry about that TSH going low. Good stuff. And this has been, I mean, this has been so, so great. Great information that you've shared today. I'm, I'm super glad that we were able to have you on. Uh, Dr. Amy, I do want to give our audience and our listeners the opportunity to, where, where can they find you at? Also. Absolutely. So uh, podcast, which you were on, Kevin, the Thyroid Fixer podcast on all podcast platforms. And then you can also find me at dramyhorneman.com. If you're interested in working together, you can book a free discovery call. We'll go over your health profile. So again, just like you do an application, want to make sure we're working with motivated, just driver individuals that want to get better. And then you can find me on all, all social. So YouTube is Dr. Amy Horneman, Instagram, Dr. Amy Horneman, Facebook, Dr. Amy Horneman. So just awesome. search for me. You'll find me. Awesome. Love it. And we'll link to those in the show notes as well. Uh, Dr. Amy, I want to thank you again so much for your time. And for those of you listening right now, if you want to find all the resources, show notes, everything mentioned here today in this episode over at bonecoach.com forward slash Dr. Amy Horneman thyroid, bone health, and that's it. So thanks again so much for your time. I'll see you in the next episode. Hey, it's Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. Hope you found that episode helpful and that you enjoyed it. Just one last reminder, if you haven't done so already, 
head over to bonecoach.com, sign up for your free seven day osteoporosis kickstart. It's going to tell you everything you need to do to start getting on the path to improvement. Hope you found this helpful. I'm your bone coach, Kevin Ellis. I'll see you soon.